Hello, everybody out there in internet land. You are tuning in with the boys on the Small Sports Podcast. Normally, this would be the final segment of our show, but this week we did a special episode for Strictly Fantasy alone. We can't leave the bets out, though. We got to do the spreads for the people. So we want to get into our small risks with the big rewards, and this is where we help you make some money. Um, we're just going to be helping you guys pick through some of the best money lines, the spreads, the over-unders for the week. So, Dave, let's get started, my friend. Well, thanks for the introduction, Luke. I appreciate yeah, that. Um, you're my dude. You're my guy. The thing is, if we got to mention the highlight of it all, oh, Proline Stadium. Yeah, boy. That's who we use uh, for our bets here. Um, so we highly recommend you guys use them out there with the option of stadium bets. Y you can overlap the old-fashioned three points as a tie that people lost all their money on all the time. Because, my goodness, how many games go into a three-point difference of a game, right? That's Just true. too many, too yeah. many in football. Um, but, yeah, also now in New Brunswick, we are able to make single-game bets. In Canada in general. In Canada, sorry. In Canada in general, we're allowed to make single-game bets and that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So you can listen to what we say and take it with a grain of salt because, you know, we're always perfect. <laughs> Not true. Um, that being said, 10 and 6 again last week. Yeah. Nice. Now, on, on money lines. Obviously, we're money gonna, lines strictly. We're going to be giving everybody what we think is good for spreads and the over under totals and stuff as well. But money lines strictly, we were 10 and 6. Uh, reflecting on last week, we hit with the Rams, the Vikings, the Packers, the Bucks, the Pats, the Chargers, the Cowboys, the Cards, the Bills, and the Ravens. We did whiff. We missed on Vegas, the Jags, the Panthers, Washington football team. Denver Broncos and the Jets. But in our defense, those six teams just they didn't do what we wanted them to do. <laughs> You're right. Uh, they whiffed. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. It so was them who whiffed. Let's just jump right into it. We'll start off with our Thursday night game. Um this is gonna be a good game. Yeah. This is a nice NFC game. I'm excited for all the primetime games this week. Yeah, me too. Tampa Bay is being hosted by the Philadelphia Eagles. Now we have a money line. Obviously, the Tampa Buccaneers are favored. They're seven point spread, and the over under is being 52 and a half. Mm. I think the smart play, Tampa Bay is probably going to win this game. Yeah. However, I don't think they're going to win by more than seven points. I think that Philadelphia is good enough to. They can keep up with them in a coaching aspect. Right. In my opinion. But I think seven points is too much. Uh, Tampa Bay has won some, some games they probably shouldn't have won. Um, you know, they got exposed by a really good LA team. They barely beat a New England's Patriots team, who I don't think is very, very good. Mm. I think the Philadelphia can keep this game close. Uh, however, I do think it'll be a sloppy game. I think there'll be some some turnovers. I would take the under on this game as well. Nice. What are your thoughts? I think this is a fair call, Dave. I do. Um, I I like the Eagles, and I feel like the money line is just like really enticing, but I just don't think it's a reality that they'll win the game. Um, so I think taking that spread is probably the, the smart place to go there. Yeah, you're good. Cool. On to the Sunday afternoon games. No, wait. We have a game. Another morning game. Another morning game. Another Let's neutral, another neutral state London Let's game. Go. Uh, okay, so we have the Dolphins going into Jacksonville, technically. <laughs> London is home for Jackson. I feel be really bad for London. It's so weird, like those <laughs> days, like when like Blake Bortles was like the king of London. Like he was a monster. Um, so we have Miami favored on the road um, by three and a half points with an over under of forty seven points. I'm taking Jacksonville money line. Ooh. Uh, it's a juicy spread, or sorry, it's a juicy spread. It's a juicy money line, and I'm gonna probably take the under as well. Mm. I think that Jacksonville in London, they, they travel well. They, they've done it more times than any other team right now in the NFL. Miami's got some weird situations going on. You know, is Tua going to play? Is he not going to play? I feel like their expectations are so high this year, and they're just running at their mediocre pace that they always hit. I think that Jacksonville could sneak out a win here. I really do. So you're risking it for the Brissett. Stop it. <laughs> I could not. I'm sorry. All right. Continue. Cincinnati at Detroit, our Sunday afternoon games. Uh, so Cincinnati is favored on the road in Detroit, as they probably should be. Mm -hmm. um, spread of three points. And we have an over-under of 48. I think, that's a f I think that's a really accurate over-under. I personally wouldn't 
put money on over or under on this one because I don't really, really, I don't know how it's gonna go. Mm. I think the best bet, I think Cincinnati for the money line is the safe bet, but I actually really like the Detroit spread. I think they can stay within three. They've kept competitive games, which is very strange for the Lions. I think that there's. I think I'm actually coming around for for um, Motor City, man. Like I MCDC. MCDC yeah. is he. He can, he actually genuinely like he is a real guy. Yeah, he's a man. He is, and I think that Detroit wants to win games. I don't think like they're old Detroit, like where it's like, ah, we're gonna lose again. It's fine. Yeah, like it's just it's the stigma. I think they can. They might even win this game, but I don't, I'm not gonna go that far. I'm gonna say that I think they stay within three points. They keep it competitive. I think Cincinnati is a good team. They're not a great team, um, and I think the under is gonna be a safe. The safest bet. You know what makes me mad? What? Is that the spread is not 3.5. If it was 3.5, I would be smitten to take the Lions spread. But that's a field goal game? Like, come on. They know that's exactly what the Lions have been doing. If Drake was here, he would tell you guys that that's what the Lions do. They learn how to lose games very close. Yeah. The (laughs) Lions, the last two games for both teams. So So the Bengals lost by a field goal to both they lost the game to the Packers, but they won the game to the Vikings. And the Lions have lost both games in a row to a field goal to the to the Ravens and to the Vikings. <laughs> Close games, man. What you got next, Dave? Next up we have the Green Bay Packers at the Rival Chicago Bears. This is the Duh, oldest Bears. rivalry in all of sports history. Is that a thing? That's a thing, man. It's a thing. This is I think it's over hundred I think last year was a hundred years. Wow. That they've been like division like rivals. Um, don't quote me on that. Actually, yeah, hit me up in the comments. Am I an idiot or did I nail it? It was, well, it was 2020, <laughs> the 100th year. I think it was. Um, so Green Bay is a favorite, obviously, at 1.47. Uh, and it's a four and a half point spread with an over under of 44. 44 even. Okay, it's moved by 0.5. Um, I think I'm going to roll with the Bears, man. I'm taking Bears money line. Taking the bear spread, I'm taking an over. I'll give you the over. You're stupid on everything else. I don't think the Packers are firing at all cylinders. Have I you think seen the, Devonta Adams? He is a phenomenal football player. Yeah. However, I think that the overall capacity of the defensive t- unit of the Bears is good enough to get to Rodgers, to get him on the ground, rattle him a bit on the road. And I think that if they're smart enough, and maybe Nagy isn't, so maybe I'm just blowing smoke here. If they can run the ball and take some time away from Rodgers owning possession of it, I think they can win the game. That being said, the smart pick, I think, is the spread. Mm-hmm. But I'm actually going to, I will be putting money on the Bears' money line. I will. Bold. 100%. <laughs> Give it to me next, Dave. Texas. I actually don't know. We're going to skip this one. <laughs> <laughs> Texans at the Colts. We got a, a obviously the Colts are favorite at home. Uh, it's one point two payout. Uh, it's a yeah. It, I was right earlier from our last podcast. Check it out, by the way. Small media. Uh, we had a nice small sports podcast earlier, and uh, we went through some nice stuff. Fantasy. But nine and a half points. Favorite at home with an over under of forty three and a half. Ugh. I'm putting money on the Texans. Dave, don't do this, to me. Texans money line. That Don't is make a, me bleed my own blood. That is a juicy. If you want to do a solo bet, ten bucks, five bucks, just some little like, just some dink and dunks. I think that the Texans, like the Colts, are just so strange of a team. Yeah, they they win games against really great teams barely, and they lose games against really bad teams. I think that you can. I think you put money on the Texans. And I think you can win. I would give you, like we were saying in the podcast, for those of you who haven't watched, go check it out now, please. Um, I would think that the Texans' money line is a, is an easy one to take. Or sorry, not the money spread. line. The spread is an easy one to take. I don't see that they lose by 10 to the Colts. Um, Carson Wentz is not that good. Jonathan Taylor is very scary. But um, if Davis Mills can at least recreate half of what he did last week, it'll still be a semi-competitive game, and that's what they've been doing. The Texans have been like a semi-competitive team with pretty much every game. They're still doing their best Lions and losing, but um, that first week's win was a was a farce. Anyway, 
I'm moving on. <laughs> the Kansas City Chiefs at the Washington Footballs. What balls? Kansas City. So we have Washington as a home dog. Uh, seven point home dog. A lot of home dogs actually this week. I don't know if you noticed that or not, but a lot of home underdogs with an over under of 55 and a half points. The safe bet, obviously. Dog. That was funny. It's pretty funny. What? Good for you, home dog. They're a home underdog. Yeah, yeah they're home it's, dogs. It's pretty funny. That's what they're called. Good for you. You should listen to more podcasts. <laughs> um, Kansas City is obviously the smart player on the money line. I just, I don't think Washington wins this game. Um, but I do like wash. I don't. I think seven points is too much. I really do. I, based off the way Kansas City's been playing, I just don't see it. And I would take the under as well. 56, 55 and a half. Fifty six points is a lot of points against either of these weird teams. Mm-hmm. Unless this is a game where Mahomes comes back and just domination station is all over the place, which there's a very good chance. Um, I think the under is definitely a little rich. I think Kansas is is definitely the right money line pick. I don't necessarily prefer it because I mean they haven't been great, so the spread makes sense. I think you're you're good across the board on that yeah. one, Dave. If I if I have to, I'm probably not going to put money on that game. Yeah, it's just a weird one. All right, moving on to oof, when the tugs on the heartstrings here. This is the Los Angeles Chargers at the Baltimore Ravens. You care about this game, don't you? I I give a very big care a big about hoot. this game. I, there's a, a lot of hoots hoot. to be given here. The Ravens are a favorite at home um, by three points. Dangerous. And the over-under is 52 and a half. My gut is telling me that the Chargers are a better football team. Um, and that that 2.28 is nice to lay on a money line. Mm. However, I would not... I can't do it. I have to take the Ravens' money line at home. Emotional victory last on, on Monday night against the Colts. I think it's going to go over. I think Lamar is on fire. I think the Ravens defense isn't doing what they're supposed to be doing lately. I think it's definitely an over. Like a safe bet in this in this game particularly is an over. Um, I also like the Chargers spread. Yeah. I think those it's the Ravens have been playing. They've been playing to their opponent. Mm. And the Chargers are a very good appoint, opponent. I just think that uh that's a lot of pressure for Herbert. How how is the Chargers run defense? The run defense is not terrible. Um their pass rush is obviously a lot better. You've got a just a scary combo on the edges. Yeah. Um like Ingram and Bosa are terrifying. But in terms of running, it doesn't matter because the Ravens haven't been running the ball. They just mm. lost they just lost a, a historic 43 record. 43 game historic record. Yeah. They just lost a historic record because they had to they had to come back from 22 point deficit to the Colts at home. Mm. They're not they have Tyson Williams and they have Devonta Freeman and they have Latavius, uh, Latavius Murray. Murray and they're not really using any of them. It's just it's just Lamar. Lamar. <laughs> so I don't yeah. think it matters. I think it's the pass rush which is scary. So I think this is a very close game. Um, out there, I'm uh, my unbiased opinion. Two point two eight payout on a Chargers money line is mint. Uh, I won't be doing it. I can't do it against my team. But I think you guys should definitely consider facts. Next. Minnesota Vikings are going to lose to Carolina. New man getting beat with the Minnesota Vikings. I think that the... So, Carolina is, again, an underdog at home. A uh, home dog. Um, by one point, it's a pick em here. And the over-under being 46 That's points. tight game, man. I think it's Carolina money line. I think it's Carolina spread. I think it's the under. That's just... That's how I'm looking at it right now. I have now. no opinion in this game. I cannot choose it. That's fair. It's t- it is a tough one. Um... Yeah. Next one I want to see though. Oh, it's what, good. What's that? What's that cards game doing for you, Dave? Arguably game of the week. I would, yeah, probably close. Obviously Chargers Ravens over here, but um we got the Vikings. Sorry, not we got the Cardinals at the Browns. Um Cleveland is favored at home with it by two and a half points. And an over under forty nine and a half. I do not see Cleveland winning this game. That's I unfortunate. That, I think Arizona is absolutely a good football team i think cleveland's a good football team too and they're really good at time of possession and, and controlling the rock running the ball but arizona's defense is number two rated overall um and i think they can put up points i think 
Murray's like, yeah, it's I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna ball this week. So I think the safe bet is money line Arizona, nice payout. I think it's the two and a half point spread, and I think it's an over. After last week, the fact that this is an under fifty is insane. I feel like that just is free money. Um, I know Cleveland obviously has good defense and cards are good defense too, but this is just going to be a shootout game. Like yeah. these, these teams are going to be going at each other's throats. And yeah, I think, I mean, how do you, how do you give that big of a gap to the undefeated Cardinals? That's, it's weird. It's a weird spread. Um, I think that the chalk is on the Browns. The, the, again, the Browns are not a and sorry, I meant, good team. I meant the gap in difference between the money lines. Yeah, like that's a big. a big money line for it's an nice. undefeated Cardinals team. Put money on the Cardinals. Yeah. yeah. Next game, we have the Dallas Cowboys, America's team, on Cowboys. the road into America's sweetheart team, the Patriots. <laughs> no, think about it. Though. These, are like, these are the two. These the are pinnacle probably the, of the, America. Exactly. These are yeah. the top two teams that America likes to cheer for. Mm-hmm. You have your, your 80s dynasty team, and you have your you know your 2000s dynasty team, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Neither of which I care for. No, I hate them both. Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. I think it's Dallas money line. I think it's Dallas to win by four points. I think it's an over. I think Dallas looks really good. Yeah. Which I hate to say. Ezekiel Elliott's been a top three running back this year. He's doing his job finally. Yeah. He's he's healthy. He's doing well. It's good to see. Like It's really nice to see Dak playing the way he is after what happened. Yeah. A lot of times, that something like that, even the mental game is just there to, to really mess with you. I think he's done a really, really solid job of. I actually, I really like the fact that you know, in Hard Knocks, he got to see how like just driven he was. Like, let me play in preseason. Let me get out there. I want to get on this field. Like he was as close to clawing on to the field as he could, and now he's just coming out there slinging. And like the boys are looking good. It's kind of gross, but here we are. <laughs> if yeah, if you if you haven't watched Hard Knocks, this was definitely a good season for. Soyton. Next um, play here is Vegas and Denver, Dave. God Vegas and Denver. Love pro line, but man, when it kicks me out sometimes, it just makes me <laughs> just a uh, just not a happy camper. Well, you know what? Hey, hey I'm going to take it over for you. I, I got can it see back, it, I can you can see ahead. it right here. Yeah, screw you, Dave. I got this. <laughs> um, I'm still making Dave's calls on this, so please don't feel like you're being slighted. Like I, I, I'm, I'm going to make Dave's calls on this for him. <laughs> uh, You'll notice none of them are fully highlighted, which yes. means I'm not betting on any of it. Yes, this this is a game that you probably don't necessarily want to touch because the odds are very strange, but at the same time, it is an enticing game. We have Vegas versus Denver. We have Denver as a big dog at home. They also have a favorite. The, they're yeah. favorite at home. Sorry. Dog meant, means but... underdog. Okay. I'm sorry. This is what happens dog. when we let Lou take you know the what, reins. Just, just go. Let's go. This is what happens when we let the let, let the kid play in the pool, right? That's a weird <laughs> statement. I don't know. Yeah, Denver is uh favorite at home by three and a half points. I think that's probably too much. I don't know. I, you'll see if you saw my notes, you'd see I just I don't have I have them spot highlighted, but not Be maybe he's a little more recovered from last week. The under is forty four. I think that might be if I had to, if you put a gun to my head and said put money on this game somewhere, I'd probably take the under of the forty four. Vegas has got some weird shit going on with Gruden. The Gruden of it all. Yeah, yeah. You, hey, buddy, you shouldn't have said that shit. Mm. That being said, uh, I'm gonna stay away from this game. If you guys bet it, let us know in the comments what your bet might be because I'd love to have some more insight on that one. That one's just I'm staying away from it. Been waiting all day for a Sunday night. You got it, buddy. Now, this is a strange game as well. I would love for Seattle to just just go out and devastate Pittsburgh at home. Pittsburgh is favored at home by four and a half points. I think four and a half points is a lot to give a team like Pittsburgh right now who's been struggling for most games. Sure, they beat up Denver last week, but I don't think that Denver was ready to play. Well, Dave, don't you know it? I don't know why I did that. Sorry, you're ruining everything. Yeah, with that bad <laughs> pun and misclick. I, I was trying to click away from myself oh, yeah. while still looking yeah, at you. Yeah. It didn't work out. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> Seattle on the road. Uh, they're four and a half underdogs. Uh, the over under forty two and a half points. I think the play, the smart play, is Pittsburgh money line. Uh, I'll be betting Seattle spread 
I think they can stay within four and a half points. They might even win this game. Uh, Geno Smith is not a bad quarterback. He's decent enough. His weapons are strong. Good coaching. Uh, the Seattle travels well. They're actually they win more games on the road than they do at home, which is completely ass backwards from the last like like four years ago. Um, I think the over is probably a safe bet too. Yeah, you you have it tallied there, but not marked. And I was thinking to myself, forty two and a half. I know Geno Smith is not fantastic, and I know that the Steelers have not had a great offense, but just seems low. I mean, it's still like. Carson, Metcalf, Claypool, Lockett, Deonta, Najee. Like, there's still a lot of offensive weapons on the field there. Somebody's going to score. Yep, I'm with you. Last game, the Monday night game. In my mind, game of the week. Luke's mind. Don't go there, people. You don't want to be a part of it. (laughs) We have the Buffalo Bills traveling to the, again, the home dogs, the Tennessee Titans, six-point underdog. Unless it's changed. Did I, did I mess that one up? They changed. Okay, six points. So this this started at four and a half points, by the way. Yeah. Let's move up to six. It's been a stretch. Everybody wants the Bills. Everyone's, well, I mean, why not, right? They're on fire. The number one ranked team in the, in the league. They just came off of a, you know, a game where they, they beat their kryptonite uh, Kansas City Chiefs in Arrowhead in prime time. I think that the safe money, again, is Buffalo money line. I think that. I'll be putting the money on the spread for the Titans, so I think they'll stay within six, and I'll definitely be taking the over in this game. Yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't pay me to not. It's yeah, it's... O- over fifty four just seems unrealistic. I feel like I feel like the Bills could put up forty, and the Titans have the ability with Derrick Henry and everybody else to get out there and sling the ball too. Um, that's probably the only place I'd really put my money. Everything else makes me nervous. I own too many of them in fantasy. <laughs> that and that will summarize what we're at here. Now that being said. It's time to uh, lay it small on the line, right? Oh, baby. Give this it is, to us. This is a beautiful segment where we, me personally, actually, I take games that I don't think are too outlandish. We plug them together for a nice parlay. You lay it all on the line, and you just, fingers crossed, hopes and <laughs> prayers, whatever you got to do, <laughs> spin in circles, one foot behind your back, whatever it might be. <laughs> And you think it might, it could be very much, you know, risky for the biscuit. It could, in fact, land. So, what we're doing this week, it's a five team parlay. We've got three spreads, two money lines. We're taking the Bears spread four and a half. They're going to stay within four and a half. Mm -hmm. We're going to take the Texans to stay within nine and a half. Mm -hmm. We're going to take the Cardinals to stay within two and a half. We're taking the Panthers money line and we're taking the Cowboys money line. That, if you spend a hundred bucks, you're going to make two, five, five, two. Damn, twenty five hundred bucks. That's a, that's a, that's a small on the line. You're laying it small. Lay it small on it. the line, man. All of it. <laughs> now uh, that's spicy. I like it. That being said, I hope you can appreciate our thoughts and opinions on these games. Obviously, they're never perfect, but we have been doing fairly well. Uh, we're positive for the year. So hopefully, you've been following along with us. You want to bet along with us. Uh, you know, whether it's big bets, small bets, whatever it might be. This is what makes football as fun as it already is. Um, you know, get to follow your teams and 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 dive into the passion of the game itself, and then take that knowledge and kind of maybe make some money on it throughout the year, right? So um, thanks again for watching with what we're doing, and I'll pass it over to Luke to say goodbye. Yeah, everybody, again, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to all of our content. You can find us on YouTube for everything video. You're going to find us on Spotify, Apple, and Podbean for the audio. Uh, If you haven't tuned in already, we already uploaded our most recent episode of the Small Sports Podcast, where we did everything fantasy for the bye week. Uh, And again, this is going to be uploaded on video and audio for you as well to get those spreads and get those picks out there for you. Thanks again for your time, and we are signing off.